Okay, welcome to the 2023 PGA Show. I'm here with Bill Price. He's Director of Custom Fitting at Mizuno USA. Um, and I want to hear all about your 2023 products. Okay. Um, let's start with, with the driver and then the wood line and we'll work our way down through the bag. So we've got STZ and STX this year. What's the main differences between the two drivers? Yeah, so we're really proud of this. So it's interesting in our, in our wood line, it's kind of been a, you know, a, a yearly process where we kind of started um, what we call like rapid development. So we had that last year we had our ST 200s and before that we had our 200s and then we had like our 190. So it was kind of a journey that we got to. And the, the, the cool thing about our new drivers is our Cortex, which is our uh, chamber, Cortex chamber technology. So it's actually very visible. Yeah. And so, so what we've done is really cool from the fact that, so we have two different models. We have a Z and an X. Yeah. Okay. Uh, both of them have the, the, the um, Cortex chamber, which is what this is. And what this allows us to do is we actually put five grams of stainless steel that, and it is embedded into this chamber. Okay. Okay. So by doing that, we can actually put a little bit more weight forward okay, yep. to lower some spin. But what the cool thing, what it does is it, it think about it, if you were ever on a trampoline and you, and everybody double bounce somebody on a trampoline, that's kind of what this is doing. Okay. So what it's doing is, is that as the face goes in, when you hit the ball, the face will expand. This also expands but then what happens the face starts this kind of delays and pushes it forward like a double bounce okay and then it gives you more ball speed does it improve that just off the low strikes or is that across the board across the board right and so what's happening is because we've got that in both of our drivers was and our three wood in our in our fair in our hybrids the interesting thing is is that by us having this new technology we've increased the ball speed yep. okay we've also increased the level of some forgiveness and now what's happened in the past We've had a Z and an X, okay? Um, but on the tour, we had more Zs being played on the tour. Now it's about 50-50 X versus Z. So this, in the previous lines, our Xs were kind of more like draw bias, but these are not draw bias golf clubs. What this okay. one is, is the, the X is gonna be a little bit deeper face. Yep. Um, the sweet spot height is gonna be a little bit different on that one. It's gonna be a little taller profile here. The Z is gonna be a little bit flatter, you know, kind of this, this so it, yeah, it's a little squattier, so it does this one, yep. okay, and a little bit lower profile. Um, the weight on the Z is gonna be more in the middle. So if yep. you look at it here, it's more in the middle, okay, where the X is gonna be a little bit more in the heel by. So what that allows it to do is the weight being more toward the heel gets closer to the center of the shaft axis and a lot you can really work ability that way. Yeah. So don't, like, people shouldn't be spooked. They see the weight in the heel. It's not a draw bias driver. It's Correct. actually a more maneuverable driver. Exactly. And I think that I think the biggest thing in club fitting where I think the misconception is, um, is that when you put the weight all the way in the heel, it automatically goes left. And, and, and that's not the case because what happens is, like you said, when you put the weight in the heel, it moves this toward the shaft axis which allows you to work it more, kind of like a muscle back blade, yeah, yeah, okay? Yeah. But now what happens if you can work it more, it's independent of the player. So the player controls what they want. So in actuality, some people can fade it more when the weight's in the heel because yeah. they can work their hands this way and the, and the club works with what they're trying to do versus sometimes if the weight's all right here, they can't do that as much. And it's a minute amount, it's enough to make a difference, but this center weight's gonna stabilize that toe section a little bit more. It's, it's gonna be harder Absolutely. to get the toe working over. So if anything, you'd maybe be easier to hit some more fades with this style club because you can hold the toe on a bit easier. Absolutely, exactly. And that and that's because of where the weight is positioned there is positioned in relation to the shaft axis. Yeah. It's more neutral, it's right in the middle. So this is more toward the heel, so you can actually, you know, like you said, you can the player can manipulate the club more with this one. This one's kind of like a plug and play, it goes long and straight. Just get it going. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So does that te technology cross over into the woods and the and the hybrids? Yeah, and so that's what's interesting. So it's a whole family from the fact that we've got our our you know, our three woods and our hybrid. So also the same thing. So you would put the weight more forward. Yep. Okay. So that reduces the spin. So, you know, when these type of things, you get the higher launch, but you want to have that manageable spin. You don't want to be really spin. You don't want to be low spin. So what this allows it's doing the same thing. It's increasing the ball speed. It's the same type of thing. If the face goes in, we have the weights here that goes in face rebounds. This catches up and explodes the ball forward. Yeah. And it's great shape. Put it on the ground. I mean, I'm a big fan of, of uh, like a, a shallower head, and it looks like you can get that leading edge under the ball, which gives people confidence to to get the, the fairway wood airborne. And that's a tough tough ask for most people. No, absolutely. We, and it comes like you said. We have a five wood and a three wood, um, and then in our hybrids, it's the same thing. So it's all the ST line. 
So hybrids are, you know, 16, 19, uh, 23, 25. Yep. Okay, so the same type of thing. So now, you know, hybrid, you know, hybrid's an interesting club because it's more associated with the irons part. Right. You know, so you're kind of doing more of the gapping that you want to do. So that's why we have more of the loss. We have our quick switch. So with their interchangeability, so you can sit there and add plus or minus two degrees with each one of them. Which is super important when you're trying to blend a set of hybrids oh, into irons or woods, you know, you need that adjustability. Right. And so and so now if you're sitting there, if you want consistent, you know, you got your driver's got the technology, you got fairways got got the technology, and then now you got the hybrids add the technology. And then it's just a just a great family that you can sit there for consistency. Yeah. I mean and, and woods. Are, are really great for Mizuno, but what everyone knows is nothing feels like a Mizuno, right? It's right. an iron story predominantly. Sure. And you've got some new stuff in the iron range this year. Yeah, we're excited. It's interesting. We've kind of, you know, we've launched, we launched in our hot metal line, which is, so, so our hot metal line is basically our, our lead line. That's the one, I mean, that's our workhorse. Okay, yep. so we have a hot metal, we have a hot metal pro. And the only difference between a hot metal and hot metal pro is the pro's got a little bit smaller footprint. Okay, a little bit less offset, but the technology is the same. It's chromoly. It's our technology, chromoly, which is, you know, these are distance golf clubs. Yes. So it allows the face to get really thin so you can really get the ball speed coming off of it. And so our hot metal line had, did really, really well. But we looked at it and we said, okay, what's happening in the marketplace where lofts have gotten really, really strong? So we kind of looked at it and said, okay, let's look at the landscape. What, what type of lofts are out there? So we really kind of define loss as you have traditional loss, you have modern loss, and then you have strong loss. Okay. Yep. Okay. So your traditional loss players are going to be your tour guys. I mean, their seven irons are going to be 34 degrees. Yep. Okay. Your strong loss to seven irons are going to be that 28, 29, 27, 26 in some instances. Okay. But then there was a gap there in the middle that modern loss are right around 30, 31. And so what happens is that people that don't have the ball speed, the problem is they're hitting more of the stronger loss, they can't get the ball in the air. Yeah. Because they don't have the ball speed to get the ball in the air. And it's ironic, like as a, as a fitter out there, you're seeing these game improvement clubs, and one of the biggest things to help people play better golf is to get the ball airborne, right? right. And it's a great, design. you know, yes, the, the size and shape of the golf club helps it launch, but there's not enough loft there to see it launch and spin and get up in the air. So I think this is a really great spot in the market get loft back in players' hands that really need it there. Yeah, I think you made a great point. I think what's happened is, you know, in golf, it's always been, you know, you start here and you keep going, you keep going, and you get to a point and you kind of dial things back. And But you can dial things back, you know, you keep loft maybe a little bit more loft, but then you can you can also get the gains with technology. And that's kind of where the, the high launch has come from the fact that it's chromoly, so it's like it's just like a hot metal, just like a hot metal pro. It's, you know, it's very strong. It's not hard, it's strong. And so that's a big, there's a distinction between that. You don't want it to be hard because we have, a, in Mizuno, we have a certain feel. Okay, we want a nice, pleasant feel. So it's stronger, so we still get that nice sound. But because it's stronger, we make the face thinner. And so now you like a little bit bigger blueprint, a little bit more offset, and you know, minimal offset. And then all of a sudden you get the technology of the chromoly. And then with a little bit bump and loft, which is a modern loft, the person that's got that 70 to 80 mile an hour club head speed, they're going to benefit from a 31 degree seven iron with all that technology totally. versus a 28 degree seven iron. Getting the ball in the air carries yeah. further for these guys. It's oh, not absolutely. A lot just about pumping a bullet out there. It's Correct. just seeing it land on the green. Correct. And so that's why, so that was our kind of, so we kind of had the, the hot metal franchise. This is kind of like a new store that we've added to the franchise. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. I love that. I think that's going to be a great one. What I also love about it is the, is the shape of the sole profile. See a lot of these game improvement clubs with big soles, and you've got guys hanging back on it, and that almost hurts them because they kind of dump it in the ground and bounce it off. Right. I think a little slimmer, slimmer sole profile comparative to other brands with a bit more loft is going to kill it. So it's yeah, a great it's interesting option. you said that. So actually, the high launch, and from a category, is kind of positioned as super game improving. Yeah. You know, so you got your game improving golf clubs, you got your distance players clubs, you got your the game improving area, super game improving, and you hit it spot on. Typically, super game improving golf clubs. A bigger looks like a hybrid. Yeah, exactly. Bigger, big soles, wide soles, a lot of offset. I mean, this is a traditional smaller golf club that packs all the forgiveness as those bigger ones and the technology to get up there in a classic shape. Yeah, and I think people love that. Nobody oh, wants to look at something ugly in the bag. It doesn't matter what your level oh, of game is. So. Absolutely. Okay, and we're jumping in just into these other models. This is in the in the JPX line here too. Yep. This is your forged. 
So this one does get more down to your players, or are you still calling this like a distance player? It's a it's a it's a distance player because it still has the technology of chromoly too. Yeah. So it's got the chromoly from the seven iron to the four iron, and then from the eight to the pitching wedge, it has our our ten twenty five e like our like our our like tour and our blades because. When you get into those golf clubs, kind of loft takes over. You're not, they're not really distance golf clubs, they loft takes over. So we don't see that you really need that. Yeah. Um, so from a seven iron, because lofts, you know, seven irons get a little bit stronger. So in our forwards, the biggest thing that we've done this year is we've actually redefined kind of the shape. We've kind of looked at the, you know, at the cavity back here. We've got a little different shape there. We've added some more weight on the toe because the hosels, the the, on a golf club is always the heaviest part. Yep. So if this is the heaviest part, you got to make it here. Down there. You got to put more weight here to balance it. So we kind of put here, we put a little bit more here, a little yeah. meat there. But what we've done is from a profile, we've made on from last year's model, we made the pitching wedge, nine, eights, and sevens a little smaller. Okay, nice. So what you've done is now you've got that player that he looks down at it. It's got a good, you know, proper look for him, but now it's still packed with all the level of forgiveness that they want. So not as much need to, to blend a set of, of tours with, with forged. You exactly. can go all the way down with a forged. Exactly. Where before you might have had that, you could go all the way down with that. And you know, and then you have the chromoly from the seven iron up, which you have the thinner face that gives you the distance and the more technology, you know, the technology there. Yeah, awesome. And now the wedges. I know everyone's pretty hyped about this uh, this T22. Just the color alone is, is pretty eye-catching. So this yeah, is yeah so, yeah, so it's interesting. So yeah, so this is a copper. So this is, it's interesting. So this is a plated golf club. Right. So it, it's like a rust, okay? So it's plated. So it's kind of like our T22. We came out with it last year. Uh, and, you know, this is the T. It's kind of like a teardrop shape. It's kind of, you know, the guys on the tour are playing it. These are the ones with a little bit smaller uh, profile. Uh, it's got four different grinds. Uh, and what we did was we said, okay, let's kind of make another model, which is called an S23. And what we did here is... We, we put a little bit more, like you said, there's a little like, more going on in the back than is this one. Yeah. So kind of if you look at it right here, this point right here is the exact center gravity of a golf club. So if you take this here, that point, and you push it over, that center of gravity is going to be dead in the middle about right here. Yeah. Where most wedges, the center of gravities on this one, it's going to be back here. Right. And the reason they are is because this hosel is a lot longer and more weight, so that's going to pull it here. Or you have to have more toe weight here to pull it. Well, when you do that, you lose some of your workability. Yes. And in this one, they want more workability. And this one, because the center gravity is in the middle, what that does, it give you a little bit more stability, okay? A little bit more spin because you're hitting it here. Yep. But what it does, it, it shorts it up a little bit more. So when you're going through it, it's a little bit more stable. Yeah. So almost like the driver story, just, you know, it's a little Absolutely. more stable through impact. These are more of your workability, your true player trying to spin it and keep it low, high, maybe turn it over a little bit and this is your plug and play, you're still going to get all the spin that you want, but it's more of a straight shot. No, absolutely. And, and, and also from a field standpoint, they're the exact same. Okay. This is a boron. This is so this is our forged boron. This is our forged boron. They're the same metals. They're the same groove structure. They're everything. So this is basically kind of like, like you said, this is a little bit more playable. This is a little bit, a little bit bigger footprint. Not a lot. A little bit more rounded. This is more teardrop. So that you've got two different players. So it's interesting. There were some questions yesterday at the demo day. People going, where do, where does this fit in? Do I have maybe this one in my 60 and I have this one in my 54s and this, or do I maybe have this in my swing club and a gap and go that way? And I'm going, it's player dependent. Yeah, what do you like looking at? What would you like looking at? You know, you might you might look something at 60 and this one looks so much easier out of a bunker versus this one. Yeah. But your feel's gonna be the same, okay? Uh, what about distance? When you're blending, I see a lot of guys, let's say that you're playing a, a forged uh, in, in down into the pitching wedge. Yep. Would you be able to put a 50 degree in here and see a nice transition of distance? Or do you want to put the gap wedge in with the set here? Yeah, it's a great question. So typically, typically in the distance golf clubs, um, you're probably going to, we have gap wedges with that. So you kind of want to have the gap wedge with the pitch wedge. Because it's interesting, gap wedges now, because they're 50 and pitch wedges are 45, 46, 43 now, gap wedges are more like full swing clubs. Yes. Yeah, okay, yeah. so they match more. So it's kind of like your pitch wedge reacts to your nine iron, your nine iron to your eight. Your gap wedge now works with your pitching, pitching wedge, wedge to do that. So that's why we have set matching gap wedges in each one of them. So even our tour yeah. has a gap wedge that's set matching if they want to do that. So you get the same profile, you get those. Uh, then it depends on what do you want with your wedges. Right. Do, do you want to have your wedges to be 
more like your 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 50, 54, maybe 58 to be all the same shape, all the same that way, all the groove structure. You can do that, or you can mix them. It, it's so player dependent, yeah. but it's not like if you went a 50 in this one, a 50 in this one, the distances are going to be different. Yeah. Or the feel. No. So that's exactly. great. You can exactly. really blend all the irons, all the wedges up. Correct. Well, thank you so much, mate. I really appreciate your time there. It's great oh, to hear about all the product, and I know you're going to have a good year, so we'll see you out there. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks.